Nine Spoons is based on an actual incident that occurred in a Nazi camp just before the end of World War II. One of these Holocaust survivors wrapped the little manure in rags and kept it with her. She came to America in the late 1940s and told this story in an interview. It was the winter before the war ended, a cold, dreary time. Early one morning, Leah crawled into my bunk and poked me until I woke. There were seven children in our barracks, but I felt closest to Leah, maybe because she was the youngest, only four years old. In spite of the cold, I crawled out of my bunk and walked with the excited little girl to the only one doorway in our barracks. Sure enough, heavy white flakes were falling down the dusky sky. Snow covered the bare ground around the bunker. It is beautiful. Now, you must come back to bed. It's still night. I took her into my bunk and she snuggled between Razel, my bunkmate and me. Leah soon fell asleep, but we had awakened Razel. It's the first snow of winter. It's Kislev already. Soon it will be Hanukkah. The children should have a menorah. I could make one. I could make one out of spoons, but I would need nine spoons. Rezel had been an artist before the war. She was so good with her hands. In the camp, she worked in the sewing room, repairing the uniforms of Nazi guards. Sometimes she smuggled out a needle and enough thread to stitch together the rags that we wore. If anyone could figure out a way to make a menorah, surely Rezel could do it. But how to get the spoons in so many? In the camp, spoons were valued like gold. When we first came to the camp, Everyone received a metal bowl to hold watery soup and scraps of food they gave us. But getting a spoon, hmm, that was our own problem. Whoever had one was able to scoop up every last drop of food. So how could we possibly gather nine precious spoons to make a menorah? I had a spoon. I took it with me wherever I went and even slept with it at night. Razel, if you share your spoon with me at mealtime, I'll give you my spoon for the menorah. Of course I'll share. Now we have one spoon. Just then, we heard someone tap on the bottom of our bunk. Hindle had heard us talking. Miriam and I will share a spoon. Now we have two spoons. That morning, walking through the slush to get to the factory where I worked, I saw a piece of metal glittering in the mud. It was an old, bent spoon. A miracle. Since hundreds of women walked that way each day, there was no way to find out which poor soul had dropped it. Now we had three spoons. That evening, as we stood in line for some food, Hindle came up behind me and quickly thrust something cold into my hand. It was a beautiful silver teaspoon. It was in the pocket of a suit. My job was to sort through mountains of valuable things for the guards, things they had taken away from us as soon as we came to the camp. Jewelry, clothing, combs, even pictures of our family. Don't tell where it came from. I could get into terrible trouble for keeping the spoon, but I wanted to help with the menorah. Now we have four spoons. That cold night, as we huddled together for warmth, Miriam bent down and pushed two pieces of metal into my bunk. I felt them in the darkness. They were rusty. The handles were cracked, but they were spoons. Where did you get them? I asked in amazement. I found them in the garbage. I work in the kitchen. If I had been caught taking spoons or anything out of the garbage, I could have been badly punished by the guards. Now we have six spoons. A few days later, Libra brought in two more spoons nearly new. We worried that the guards would find out. Would they take away our spoons? What would they do to us? Don't worry. All the women in the camp know about the menorah, but it's still a secret from the guards. I washed the clothes and cleaned the house of one of the guards. For doing this, he offered me some extra food. Even though she, like the rest of us, felt hungry all the time, she told him she wanted spoons instead. Now we have eight spoons. It was just two days before Hanukkah, and we still needed one more spoon for the menorah. 
I thought about it all day while I worked. We whispered about it and we ate our watery soup and stale bread. We wondered about it as we lay awake on the hard boards that were our beds. Before I fell asleep that night, I asked Hashem to please send us one more spoon for our menorah. Finally, on the last night before Hanukkah, a young woman we have never seen before brought us a rough handmade spoon. It was my sister's, was all she said. Because of everyone's sacrifice, we had nine spoons. Early the next morning, Razel woke me quietly. Look! There, between us, in our bunk, stood a menorah for the children. I had twisted the handles of the nine spoons into a stem and stuck it into a piece of wood so it would stand. I had bent the round parts back to hold the flames. The Shemesh spoon could be picked up to light the others and replaced in the base. The women woke up, anxious to see Razel's handiwork. They crowded around her, amazed and delighted with a little menorah. That night, when it seemed safe, I gathered all the children to the space in front of our bunk. I filled the first spoon and the shamesh with fat that I had saved from the kitchen. I rolled two wicks from some cotton thread I had brought from the sewing room. With one of the matches I got from a worker in the factory, I lit the shamish. We whispered the blessings together, all the women, the children too. Everyone held their breath as I took the shamish and lit the first Hanukkah light. It was our own special Hanukkah miracle. Yeah.